last section in chapter three, section 3.7, the Monday, or excuse me, Thursday, we will take on section 4.1. Uh, this being the last section in chapter three, that means the test is coming up. So 4.1 is going to be on uh, Thursday, and then we have our next test on Tuesday. So hopefully you've printed out your assignment sheets and you've been working on it, picking off problems here and there. And after today, we will be done with three. So I'm, I'm hoping to see some of those start to come rolling in in the next couple of days instead of everybody uh, waiting till the last minute. All right. So the notes for today, section three, seven, I gave you uh, some extra ones. It's uh, something that looks like that. Some things I used to use. I like those problems as well, but you already had these. And we're going to talk about, you know, again, I, boy, you know, the, we do a lot of this Y equals and Ks and Xs and, and just, just lots and lots of words but you know there's there's some problems that start to come into play here and um you know i'm, I'm going to start out with uh, this idea of a variation i'm going to look at three different ones a direct and inverse and a joint so if i said to you takes you uh you live in a development okay you live in a development and all the yards are the same size. And if you mowed one yard, it took you two hours. If you mowed two yards, it would take you four hours. If you know, if you mow three yards, you know, and, and this would keep going on and on. And this is what's known as a direct variation. As the number of yards go up, the number of hours go up. Okay, as one goes up, the other one goes up, and, and that's about the easiest way I can describe what this direct variation thing is, okay? A direct variation. An inverse is, say you're getting ready to go to the beach and you're like, guys, gals, I have, I have to mow and it takes me 10 hours to mow. And what if one of your friends says, well, I'll come over and help. So what took you two hours, now as the number of people goes up, the number of hours should come down because if there's two of you working on it, it should only take you five hours. Or if there's three of you working on it, the number of hours comes down more. Four, the number of hours comes down more. So the more people that are working on it, the faster you get it done. The number of hours slowly comes down. And that's a, a quick overview of what this inverse proportion is. Okay. So we have direct proportion or direct variation and an inverse, and you're going to see terms like y varies directly or y varies inversely to describe those two situations I just mentioned. Uh, as you can see in each one of these, there's a k. There's a k, and the k is called the constant, and here it says constant of variation. I've also seen it as constant of proportion, lots of different names. But that K is something that we're going to have to use. Now, I, I want to start getting ready to write some equations. And first of all, I'm going to go with the wording, OK? And just some simple examples. X varies directly, OK? Uh, I almost start to think of this as E and directly as K. X varies directly as Y. That means if y goes up, if I get more yards, it's gonna take, I'm gonna multiply it by that constant k. So I can set up an equation like that. Z varies indirectly. This time it's gonna be k over the cube of x. So just getting familiar with some of the lingo again. X varies directly as y. Z varies inversely as the cube of X. T varies directly as W and inversely as Q. Not so bad. 
Yeah, it's not so bad. The circle's area varies directly, varies directly with the square as the square of its radius. Well, we know what that K is for this. It's pi. It would be pi. So we've seen that before. Again, these are simple examples. We still haven't done any problems, but we're still looking at wording. The electrical resistance R, oh, R of a wire varies directly as its length, so times length, and inversely as the square of the denominator. So you've seen crazy equations like this. Now it's a matter of when I write them out, you know, and try to describe them, how do I describe them? So if I gave you this, could you turn it into those words to explain it to somebody? Okay. Directly and inversely, we also have something called, let me get it down here, jointly proportional. And as you see, just like we've been talking about before, that means there's going to be multiple things in the numerator times that K. Oh, boy. Wording. The rat speed, S, through a maze, varies jointly. So that's times the hunger and the cheese at the end. The hungrier it is, the faster it's going to go. The cheesier the cheese at the end the bigger the size, the faster it's going to go. Z vary, oh, equals varies jointly as X and Y and inversely as the square root of P. All right. Look at that. We covered a whole page in seven minutes. Hope there's some problems to do. Yes, me too. And there are. Every time I feel your name. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down a model. And I have a whole bunch of work here. And one of the big things that I need to do is solve for K. What is my K? What is that constant? All right. So I'm going to write this down. A varies directly as B and inversely as C. Questions on that? It's not so bad. So now I'm given a situation where I say, if A is 20, when B is four and C is five. So I'm setting up my model, okay? And what I'm actually doing right now is I'm gonna solve for K. So the first thing is I set up my equation. Second thing I want to do is solve for K. K equals. Multiply by five. 20 times five is 100. Divide by four. K is 25. Okay. So now I have a model. A equals 25B over C. So I set up the equation, I found the K. Now it says calculate B when A is 30, 25 times B, and C is in fact 20. And when I do this, I am able to calculate B to equal... It's B18. Might be wrong about that. Uh, maybe. So old school me says, I'm going to take 30. I'm going to multiply by both sides by 20 and then divide by 25. I'm going to knock a five out of here and here. I'm going to knock a five out of there. And I got 24. So, yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is old school, what I just did. Brought the 20 over, divided by 25, did some canceling, made it really easy on myself. 
normal average person would say 30 times 220 is 600. How many 25s going? I don't know. How many quarters in six dollars? Well, there's four quarters in one dollar, so 24 quarters in, uh, yeah, six dollars. Okay, yep, that was pretty boring. Pretty boring. All right, so here's a little bit better of an example. I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to give you a couple minutes to try to do this one on your own. See what you can do. All right. Gave you a minute or two to work on it. Let's see if you're going in the right direction. The volume of a cone is jointly proportional to its height and the square of the radius. The volume is 270 pi cubic inches when the height is 10 and the radius is nine. So now I'm gonna find that constant of proportionality. Oh boy, I'm gonna divide by 10. That's gonna give me 27 pi equals K times 81. Divide by 81. Looks like my K is gonna be pi over three. How'd I do? Yeah, we all got pi over three. For real? Yeah. Okay, good. Nina says no. Do you understand it now, Nina? You can just nod yes or no. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. So I'm given an equation, but I have that constant of proportionality. So now I have to calculate what it is. I'm given a situation. Here's the volume, here's the height, here's the radius. So I plug those values in and I solve for K. Now I have a new equation, V equals pi over three times H times R squared. Now I come back up, what is the volume when the height, what is the volume when the height is 18 and the base is four inches. I got 216 for that. For this? Yeah. Did you get a pi in there somewhere? Would it be 216 pi? All right, I hope so. So let's see, before I even go anywhere, I'm gonna say, wait, with all this multiplication, I'm gonna make it easier and make that a six. So now I have just pi times six times 16 Six times 16, I get 96 pi cubic inches. Uh-oh. Why do we need to add pi there? Because that's what K is. So my original equation, I did not have K. I calculated K and it's pi over three. So now my new equation, instead of K, it's gonna be pi over three. Now, if I'm, getting, if I'm given a new height and a new radius, pi is going to be part of my answer. Here at the beginning, 275. Why, why do we have, to, we have to add pi over there at the beginning? Right there. It says if the volume is 270. Oh, yeah. right there. I, okay. Yep. I did not see that. That's okay. That's okay. Good. I'm going to pause for a second. Cost of a house in Wedgwood varies directly to the size of the house. 2,850 square foot house is the size. 182, 400 is the price. I come up with a K. And now I have my new equation. Here was my first equation. I solved to find K came up with a new equation. So now if I know the square footage of the house, I should be able to come up with the price. King Kong, his weight varies directly as his height cubed. Again, I had an original equation. I calculated that constant of proportionality. And now I have 
an equation without the K, but the 3.606 in. So 24 foot tall King Kong should weigh about 50 tons. 2,000 pounds is a ton. I'm sorry, 25 tons. Right, so you just spent time in groups. And let's see, we have all this. B varies directly to both R and H. And yeah, so we a little bit of conversation. If you got stuck, you read through that. The example, cost of a construction of a nine foot. The cost varies jointly with the length and the width. Uh, let's see, I'm going to say 730. I didn't give much room to write here, did I? 734 equals K times 9 times 12. What'd you get for K? It was, I think it was 6.8. 6.8. Anybody get something else? So now my new equation, C equals... 6.8 times length times width. So if I'm gonna use that, how much should an eight by 14 patio cost? cost $761.6. Dollars. $761.16. Cool. Thanks, Jess. Found the K. I had an original equation. I had a situation that helped me calculate that constant of proportionality. Then I used that to say, okay, so if I, instead of an eight by uh, nine by 12, if I make it an eight by 14 and I build a patio once, that's all I know about that. So we have here, time it takes to remove all the campaign signs after an election, so time varies inversely with the number of volunteers. Well, that makes sense. The more people there are to pick up the signs, the less time it's gonna take. If 12 volunteers can complete the job in seven days, seven equals K over 12, I'm thinking I get a K equal to 84. Don't know if you all got to that or not. So now I have a time, a new equation, 84 over the number of volunteers. Okay, so what if I have 15 volunteers instead of 12? Time is going to equal 84 divided by 15. Time equals... So instead of seven days with 12 people, it's gonna take me how many days with 15 people? 84 divided by 15? 5.6. 5.6. And if it takes them longer than that, you know they're goofing off. They're taking an extra hour on their lunch break. They're going to the local restaurant for wings. Generic one for my first example, Q is directly proportional to the square root of H, K times the square root of H, and inversely proportional to the cube of J. Ooh. Q is directly proportional to the square root of H and inversely proportional to the cube of J. Hopefully some of you got this far. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Let's see, I have a Q of 18. I don't know what K is. The square root of nine over two cubed. 18 equals k times three over eight. <coughs> I'm gonna multiply by eight, and divide by three, and it looks like k is going to equal, let's 
Can I get 48? Okay, so now I have a new equation. Q equals 48 times the square root of H over J cubed. I think my pen is done. All right, so blah, 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 blah. What is Q? It's a letter. When H is 16, well, I'm going to take the square root of that right away. And J is one half, that's going to give me one eighth. Q equals 48 times four times. To divide by one eighth is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Q equals a great big number. Anybody? 1,536. 1,536? Okay. All right. We're not going to get to, we're not going to do this one. It's, it's doable. We're not going to do it. But I'm going to give you this one about the oysters. And I'm going to stop the recording and end here. When you have the answer, you are done. And we are done. So once you find the answer, send it to me in the chat and I'll let you know if it's right or not. And I will then see you on Thursday. We will finish chapter three. So recording is now being stopped.